Okay, with that, I'd love to first invite our first panelist, um, Jeff Wagner from Educational Farms. So after a university education didn't provide sufficient answers, Jeff began seeking answers to the big questions that weren't answered by academia. How might we reimagine US society in the age of climate change and what it means to be a responsible human in an unraveling world? As a person dedicated to questioning the mindset stemming from settler colonialism, Jeff finds inspiration in the communities working to maintain and strengthen relationships with the natural world and with the sources of food, water, clothing, shelter, and meaning. Jeff likes walking slowly, weaving fabric and baskets, and growing beautiful varieties of heirloom seeds. Jeff founded Groundwork to help people pursue the goal of becoming ancestors that their descendants will be proud of to tell stories about. Jeff is a certified wilderness first responder. And I'll pass it to you, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, hello, um, my name is Jeff and I am coming to you from Western Colorado. Um, and the area we're in is the, the home of the Ute people um, who were pushed off their land by the US government in 1880. Um, and yeah, I'd like to share a little bit about what we're doing out here in Colorado. Um, so the organization that I work with is called Groundwork, and we're running an educational farm program, among other things that we do. Um, and the, the general vision for this program came about um, when a number of uh, educators who we all had experience working in cross-cultural education outside the U.S., kind of bringing U.S. students um, into contexts that were really different from their own, and saw that there's, um, you know, that there's a lot to be learned when you're able to step outside of your own culture, and also that it's a really complicated educational space to work in. Um, so a number of us who are based in the U.S., we were instructors who were working outside of our home countries. Um, we started a program two years ago to try to connect students to the, um, the places where they live and ask if you could um, shift people's vision for culture from within that same context. Um, and we decided to do this on a farm for a couple of reasons. One is because it's a great place to connect with um, slower paces of life and um, sources of food, sources of clothing and shelter, things like that. Um, and it also just seemed like a, a really good way to try to um, create a financial model that was more accessible. I think here on this continent, um, access to environmental education is really dependent on how much money you have. There's a lot of programs around that um, tend to be prohibitively expensive for a lot of people. And working on a farm, we can spend part of the day producing food and that food goes to feed us, but also goes to, um, it, it goes to farmers markets, different things and becomes an income source so we can fund the program. Um, and as a result, we can actually uh, pay participants to come and take part in this education. So I'm gonna share um, just some Oh, screen sharing disabled. Um, in a second, maybe a screen sharing turned on. I'll share some photos from the farm. Um, but yeah, the, our farm here, we focus on, on growing food in the morning. Um, it's a cool time to be out, like cool temperature wise. And then in the afternoons, as kind of this exchange with students, um, we have a number of different activities that we do. We have some academic activities that are um, investigating kind of the origins of the modern world and how we might be able to um, shift the culture here in North America. And uh, we also are working with different kinds of land-based crafts like basket weaving, um, things like that. So yeah, in general, the program is really diverse, but Here's some photos from the last couple of years on the farm. Um, here's a bunch of beans. And you know, on the farm, we do grow food. And one of the biggest things that we're working to grow is actually seeds. 
um, here in the dry part of North America, uh, we don't have that many seeds that are resilient to be the foundation for a food supply um, in this kind of climate. And so we're, we're working with a lot of um, different varieties of seed, both kind of breeding them and adapting them to this climate, preserving different varieties that are um, hard to find. And uh, we, we do work with some seed companies, some local seed companies to um, be distributing those seeds that we're growing. So in this picture, you can see one of our uh, students weaving a basket out of willows that we harvested um, from nearby here. And this is the area up in the mountains. Uh, so the programs over time has become more and more kind of broad in its focus. Groundwork has started offering programs that go out into the mountains and study ecologies in this region. Um, and in general, the farm is providing, we're trying to provide food for people who are on those programs. Um, and that's part of the financial model, trying to make it work. If any of you have experience in the United States, you know probably that um, running programs can be really expensive here. Uh, this farm program, Groundwork, we, we took a lot of our inspiration from friends and mentors um, who are doing similar projects around the world, specifically some farms in Thailand and in the Himalayas and Nepal and in, in India. Um, and yeah, I think as part of that, um, we're, we're really trying to learn from our friends who are creating social change in different environments through um, kind of creating a space for people to gather and just experience a different way of life. Um, and we see it being really effective. You know, when people are stewarding, saving seeds from different plants. Um, so in the beginning of the season, they're planting the seed. And then by the end of the season, we're saving those seeds um, and distributing them to different people who are gonna use them to grow their own food. Um, it, it makes a really big impact on the way that people see the world, I think. Um, yeah, so as we're looking forward to this season, um, you know, we've, we've learned a lot over time. I think about how we can structure the farm programs that we're offering to be really kind of deep experiences for people. Um, and what we're, we, what we've started to do is um, have smaller groups so our group's size has shrunk from 10 down to four, um, uh, like four students. So it feels more like a small kind of farm crew community rather than a school. And it feels a little bit more like our hope is that it feels more like um, experimenting with a different way of life rather than like going to school for something and being a part of a class. Um, and yeah, it's, a, it's just a, creating a different way of living I think one of the biggest things that everyone at Groundwork is asking is like, how do we, like none of us really have answers to the big questions in the world right now. And so how can we come together to be um, not necessarily trying to find answers, but maybe just ask questions and experiment a little bit with, um, with different ideas. And hopefully we have something to offer um, offer other people and our biggest hope really is that people, who, after they come on this program, they leave able to contribute to whatever place they're going next, whether they're looking at social activism or policy making, or whether they want to work with food, um, growing food or growing seeds, something like that. Uh, so if you're interested in learning a little bit more about what we do, um, here's our website. And uh, this year we're offering um, our, our farm program starts up in about three weeks now. Um, we have another program that's out doing plant surveys on big, uh, on the areas where big lithium mines are going to go in, in Nevada and Oregon. Um, so these plant surveys are trying to build evidence basically to say, you don't need to have giant mines here. Um, there's important plants in this area. 
We're running field courses on ecologies of this region. We have a homeschool program we've started. Um, so we have a kind of a growing selection of programs that's all really centered around this farm and the food that we grow here. Thank you.